Yo, what's up, everybody? It's your boy Slint, aka Mr. Different, back with another video. Today, I'm gonna teach you guys how I made or break down this beat, this Travis Scott Astro World type beat that I made last week around Friday or whatever. You guys asked me to do a beat breakdown, I haven't done in a long time, so here we are doing. Before we can do that, if you can't follow me, Mr. Different TV, at Instagram, SoundCloud, and Twitter, and also subscribe to the channel, you know, because we're trying to hit 100k, and it will help out appreciately so today we're gonna be looking at how i made this travis scott Astro world type b i've been listening to Astro world for the past few days since it came out and it is a dope album travis scott is definitely one of my favorite artists and you know one of my favorite producers is mike dean who makes a lot of travis scott's beats and you know i was just like eh. i was i was inspired to make an atmospheric ambient trap dark sounding type of beat and you know I, that's what I did, you know, I'm going to break it down right now. Um, I didn't try to go exactly for that Travis Scott, Mike Dean sound. I tried to, you know, implement just the, the elements like the ambient, the openness, the reverb, all that in my own style. And that's what I always do. I don't ever try to copy their style. I just try to put it in that kind of mindset or whatever with the, with the types of stuff they do. So, yeah, let's jump right to that. So we're going to go ahead and break it down. So we're going to just go ahead and go to the first pattern. And we'll go through how I made this beat. So first off, I started off with all the percussion instruments. That's that's weird for me. I usually do melodies, but today I started off with percussions when I made this beat. And I started off with this hi-hat pattern. As you see, it's a standard you know, hi-hat pattern or, or rhythm with some chops in between. And I added some low notes here and there to kind of give it a little groove. And I also mess with a couple of the velocities just to give it a little bit more of a, you know, a different feel to it. And then all I did was add a, I'm using my new favorite plugin. This is going to be on all my channels, so I'm not going to keep bringing this plugin up, but mostly just uh, right here is on all my channels. It's my new favorite plugin, which I'm really doing a review on and talk about why I like these style of plugins. But the um, only thing I use on these type of plugins is the low cut and the compression. So a lot of these uh, sounds have a little bit of low cut or high cut and some compression or maybe a little bit of gating, depending on what the sound is that will you know depend on that so yeah just just know you're gonna see that on all my channels so just be prepared but the main thing is i put a phaser on it because phaser i always do phaser with my hot hats i don't know why that's just me if you hear without uh, the phaser it sounds really bright in your face kind of just normal you put that phaser on there It has just a little bit of movement to it. And you can go crazy with it. You can do more or less phaser. You know, I like to keep it in, the, in between, but that's what I do with all my hi-hats. All right, so next, we go to the next sound. Now, if I'm going to do like this, shoot, crap. That would yeah, work a lot better. The next sound is a snare. Which I actually layered the snare sounds. I had two different snares, so that was a top snare, and I had this like simple trap snare, and I added a little bit of variation to the bottle snare. So when you add them both together, and I send them both to the same channel, so when I send them both to the same channel, I just added a revert to it, you know, fruity revert too, because that is the ish, and that just kind of give it that little, that give that little bit of spice to it, you know, when you layer sounds get so. Nothing special there, you know, just layering sounds. That's what you got to do. Next is the open hi-hat. Mm -hmm. 
Nothing special there. I'm not even going to go over there. It's just an open hi hat. Then I added like this little percussion sound that I got from one of DJ Az and Ocean Views kits. You know, shout out to those two. And it's just a, a derivative type of this, like a, a it's following the same as a as a basic hi hat pattern. So, and to add a little bit of movement to it, I am using the M Auto Pan from Melda Productions, and I love this because it's it's a great panning plugin that automatically pans. I told you about I did a review of all these plugins. Check it out in the channel, and you can watch. You can I put a, I put a card up there somewhere so you can check it out. Also, the beat is well gonna be up there. So that's a dope plugin to use right there. Then I use this other, it's a kick drum. Shout out to Ocean Views for that kick drum. That was a, that was a beefy kick drum. Uh, what I did to it is I just used, like I said, low cut, a little bit of compression with my channel strip. Nothing special there, a little bit of lows, give a little bit of compression. And I used a gate as well because I like to put gates on my kick drums to kind of just kind of make them a little bit more snappier. Um, you know, Gates are always used on live drums, so I decided why not use a gate on a sample drum because it can make it a lot punchier and a lot tighter. And I use my favorite plugin for kicks, and that is the Smack Attack. Uh, I love this plugin. It's the best transient shaper out there, hands down. Ways did an amazing job with this. And I got it onto the clip mode because if you ain't clipping, you're tripping, y'all. I made a video about that. Clip your kick drums. It, it helps out. Trust me. Every time you clip, get a clipper. Get a soft clipper or a hard clipper, it don't matter. Use a clipper on your kick drums and you'll get punch and knock easy or distortion, use distortion as well. So I took a little bit of attack off and a little bit of sustain. So that just kind of, before it sounded like this. Doesn't sound bad when I add effects on there. It just soft, like since I took some of the attack away, it's softening the kick drum. And that's what I want to kind of want it to be too overpowering because it was a very, very punchy, sharp sounding uh, kick drum. I want to be just a little bit more tame, so I just took a little bit of attack out. That's all I did there. And then all the percussion together so you guys can hear that rhythm. You know, nice little pattern. Easy. All right, next is my first pattern, my first plug, my uh, first sound, you would say. And it's a little preset I made. Uh, I'm probably gonna put this in a new preset bank, Space Sauce Volume 3, be on the lookout. Um, I think it's Volume 3, yeah. So um, it's a little pad sound, a little bit of pluck sound. It's a sine wave with some FM synthesis going on, some unison and stuff like that. Distortion, chorus, delay, and reverb. I'm not gonna go too deep in how to make this because I will be releasing this anyway. I got videos of sound design coming soon, but just a little pluck sound. And far as the effects go, oh snap, don't do me like that. As far as the effects go, I got a repeater, which is a delay plugin. So any analog delay plugin, this is my favorite delay plugin. And a little bit of reverse because, you know, reverse and stuff, I would use either use gross beats reverse plug uh, preset, use back mask, or if you get, get this one, you know, a reverse plugin will make stuff sound really, really good. Like before, this is what it sounds like dry. And also has some high cut on there as well. And then when you add them plugins in there. That reverse and that delay just makes the beat, make the sound a whole lot more live. Don't be afraid to process your sound. I keep telling you guys that. Don't be afraid to. It's going to give you a better result in the end. So next up is another serum patch. This is a very uh, simple Drake bass type effect with a chorus and reverb on it. It's a sawtooth wave with some unison, very low notes, and a little bit of filtering. So it gives it that kind of. And I am playing in a G sharp minor for those who like to know my keys I play in. Yeah, it's a G sharp minor, so you can set it G sharp minor, so yeah. And I did add this plugin called Subsynth, which is by the guys at Brainworks. And it's basically just adding some extra harmonics to the sound, as you can hear. This is what it sounded like before. And then just a little bit of harmonics add to it. It's just adding a little bit, couple little more harmonics in there to just kind of beef it up and make it a little bit more fuller. Nothing special there. I don't go extreme with my stuff. Y'all know how I do, but being subtle sometimes can be, once you layer stuff together, it's going to sound good. Next up is Analog Lab 3, my favorite, you know, all-in-one kind of plug-in for everything. You know, all my synthesizing everything in here. 
And I found this patch in the jewel in the JP8, J, the Jupe 8V, which is basically a, Ju, a Jupiter 8 um, synthesizer. It's a nice little pad sound, they call it, which is really dope. I did add M Auto Pan to it. With, I messed with the steps and the shape of the sound. So you get this weird kind of shape, which is weird. And I also mess with the smoothing as well to kind of smooth it out. And I add some reverb to it. And I'm playing just like cool, like little stab chords and it just you know it, it, since it has like a, a natural arp sound to it it just adds to it with that panning going on it just kind of moves through the stereo feel and gives it a nice lush feeling to it so and also with that resonance peak boost in it because the preset makes it sound really dope as well so then i layered that sound with another kind of stab pluck sound which is also in the Analog Lab 3. I love Analog Lab. It is the CMI V plugin, and it's called Tape Pad, if you want to know. And it sounds like this. And of course, oh, why do I keep doing that? FL. And of course, I added in the M Auto Pan, of course, to kind of just go through the stereo field. I got it on sync and got it on two bars. It kind of just just make it kind of go stereo field. Combined with that first pad, it just makes it sound really dope. By themselves, they sound good, but together they sound amazing. Get it right. <laughs> so next up is another uh, analog lab preset. I promise you the last one, and it's the C80. It's called Dark Moon, and it's kind of like a lead pluck sound I picked. So. Very analog, retro sounding, very, you know, old school. And I put a little reverser on it because, you know, reverse sounds good. And I think I also cut some of the highs out of it too. Yeah, I cut some of the highs and I cut a lot of the lows because it was just a really bright sound. See? I did not like that. It just had that, that nasty low end. So I cut all that and then made it a lot cleaner. Cause like I said, cutting the low end so you have more room for your kicks and 808s is a great way to go. And then my new favorite plugin, <laughs> I love this plugin. This plugin is amazing. And I just got it recently. It is XL by Output. It's a vocal, a modern, a modern vocal engine process. It's got a bunch of one shots and loops and vocal samples and vocal chops and vocal runs. And they're amazing. Hands down. They will make they will take your production to the next level. If you don't own this, I highly suggest getting it. It is worth the money. Point blank period. But I picked this sound called Sweeping Call. Oh, might want to uh, unmute it. And I did nothing to it. It was already sounding good because the effects that come in here sound are amazing. And I just left it alone. And then, like I said, that, it sounded great. So all my pads now, all my sounds together sound like this. Sounds amazing, right? I mean, it sounds dope. And then when you add the percussion in there as well, you get. Dope, amazing, beautiful. I love it. And then for the for the verse, that's the hook right there. So that's what the hook sounds like. For the verses, I wanted to switch up the drums and everything. So I we switched over to this for the verses and I added this sound right here. So let's go back here and then make sure everything is unmuted. I added this kick drum right here, which is a standard, my favorite kick drum with a little bit of a uh, low cut compression. And I added the gate to it. Cause I say, I like to make my stuff sound. I don't know. I like gates on my kick drums because like I say it just makes it choppy. I'll make, I'll make a video about it. I think I did make a video about it. Check it out. I think I made a video that actually talked about three steps or three things you can do to make your kick drum sound good. And yeah, the um, putting the gate is definitely one thing I love doing. And then I added smack attack. And for this sound, I wanted it to be more sharper. So I added some boost in the attack and took away some of this thing, just to make it a little bit punchier and more just snappier and make it more transient heavy. And then for the 808, I just used a sub bass, if I'm not mistaken. I picked a, yeah, a sub bass. But I use a new, I use uh same thing here, a little bit of compression, nothing else. 
And then I use this, which is the Devolver, the Dissolver by um, uh, D16, the guys who make Decimal and all that. An amazing, amazing multi-band distortion plugin. It has all kind of clipping units. I use the hard clipper, and then you can change the shape and threshold and preamp and dynamic. You can just do you can just create stuff with this. You can really go with that. I have to dive deep into it and do a review of it and do a thing. I also got that limit as well. That's really dope to have. And I just kind of pushed it and just made it, you know, distorted the heck out of it. Because before it sounds like this. I also had some side chain to it as well. I side chain the kick to the sub. But then with that dissolver on there. See how it's just, see how boring that 808 sounds with no distortion in. Boring. So please distort your 808s. If you're not if you're not distorting your 808s, you are not doing it right. <laughs> I'm just playing. But um, and then like I said, this is the this is the verse right here. So then it comes in and it just has more energy to it. So and I am doing some glide notes in there, which if you want to know how to do glide notes super easy, just add in something anywhere double click and just turn it to slide. And depending on how long you have the note, depends on how long it slides. I'll make a video talking more in depth about that. Cause you know, people keep asking me, how you do them glides to them, you know, how you do 808 slides. So yeah, that's pretty much the beat right there. As far as mastering goes, I got a shit ton of mastering stuff, which I will make a video on how to master, but just to show you what I'm doing, we got some bus compression going on. We got a little bit of some, special mastering eq which is the baxendale eq the dangerous bax eq we got my new favorite plug-in which is the this is the digital v3 which is a um mid side eq so one side is your mid side and this is your your mids and this is your side so your stereo section your mono section you can you know independently eq the, the mono and stereo which i'll go more into detail about that don't worry about that because i didn't use that I, I was that's a demo K clip to get some little soft clipping, no boosting in it, just soft clipping, just kind of soft clipping. Love K clip. And then Pro L as my final master limiter to get the volume. So without the master plugins, you get. Sounds beautiful. So yeah, there is that right there. That is all that she wrote right there. I mean, there's nothing much to it. And then I use the meter and to keep me in check. And I use my Sonos reference to just make sure I'm mixing properly throughout. But, you know, it's turned off right now. So yeah, that is it. That's how I made this Travis Scott Astro World type beat. Um, very simple in my own unique style. And like I said, mostly the thing I'm taking about, use some, use some effects. Reverb, delay. And other type of weird effects give you that ambient big sound and kind of puts it in space. And it's gonna leave room for the vocals to really sit really nicely in the beat. So yeah, that is how you do that. That's how you made the beat. If you got any questions, leave them in the description below. Y'all know how it is. If you like this video, thumb it up. If you did not like it because you are a hater, you could thumb this video down. That's the hater button. Go ahead and do that. That's cool with me. And with that being said, hope you guys enjoy. Like always, y'all know who it is. Your boy Slim, a.k.a. Mr. Different. Not motivated by the money, but the like, subscribe, and views. Thank you guys for coming here. Please subscribe if you can. Hit that bell notification so you can stay up to date when I drop a new video. With that being said, y'all know what it is. I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.